it's always frustrating when you're working on a problem and you have all the concepts on the paper but you just end up um, flipping a sign or putting the wrong sign in for some reaction term and then it, the error ends up propagating the rest of your problem so today we're going to look at picking the right sign for a reaction term that's happening at a boundary in your system and in this particular case we're talking about systems where diffusion is happening okay so let's look at a couple of problems okay we are inside of a cell and we're looking at this one protein that's being generated in the cytoplasm okay so it's, it's in some sort of concentration out here in the cytoplasm and we know that this particular protein can be transported across the nuclear membrane like, like so and we also know that we can model this transportation across the membrane as a first order reaction so what that means, if, if you remember back to Gen Chem, it's dependent upon the concentration of just one species, so this particular protein. The more protein we have at that nuclear pore, the quicker it's going to want to go across. And we also know that our system is everything that's happening at the cytoplasm and our coordinate system is like so with zero at the at the cell cell membrane and um, this this distance we'll call it let's just call it H okay so we want to m find a boundary condition for this guy for X equals H typically a reaction boundary condition is is written like like so so it's written as flux or the negative diffusion coefficient times the concentration gradient of that particular species i equals some reaction term and this reaction term can be a first second third order um, rate law it could be some sort of michaelis menten kinetics it could just be a constant rate. What we want to know is whether this sign is positive or negative. So in this particular problem, uh, we know that this side is going to be constant because we have some sort of flux. And all we need is to figure out how can we write um, our first order rate reaction. All right. So this is the rate constant for the equation. I'll just call it K1 and it's multiplied by the concentration of that species but we only care about the concentration that's at the position x equals h we don't care about the concentration at the cell membrane because we know that if it's at the cell membrane it can't go across the nucleus is this positive or negative though well let's see what happens if we say that it is negative okay if it's negative then let's say we divide both sides by negative d the the fusion coefficient then we'll get dci dx equals k1 c1 divided by d and it's positive because a negative divided by a negative gives us gives us a positive this is this is saying that we should expect a positive concentration gradient in other words as we move in the positive x direction we should expect to see an increasing concentration of this species is this the case let's do a little thought experiment let's assume that all of a sudden um, the concent the concentration of these little blue dots, this protein, is the same throughout the entire system. Okay? And we let it run for a certain amount of time. After that certain amount of time, what we would expect to see is that the particles that were here 
are now on the other side. Some of them have moved through. So we've created this kind of like vacancy. Since these cells are no longer here, since these <laughs> proteins are no longer there, we've created a vacancy. And this vacancy means that this particular area has a, a lower concentration than what's out here. Okay? So, that, that means that as we move in the positive x direction, we're not increasing in concentration, but we're rather decreasing in concentration. That should be telling you that, you know, Neil, you, you put the wrong sign in, it should be, it should be uh, positive up here, because when, divide, when we divide a positive by negative, we end up getting a negative. And that's what's happening in our system. In our system, as we move in positive x, we would expect to see a decreasing concentration of this protein. Okay, let's look at this problem. Except, rather than having our coordinate system go from um, x equals 0 at the cell membrane, let's flip it around. Let's say x equals 0 at the other side of our system, and as we move in the positive x direction, we're getting closer to the cell membrane. What we're looking at in this problem is the amount of space in between the a rough endoplasmic reticulum, this guy, and the cell membrane. And the thing that we're looking at as far as concentration is the concentration of, let's say, a certain mRNA. All right? And we are assuming that there's all these ribosomes on the rough endoplasmic reticulum. These little black dots, these are ribosomes. And we know that these ribosomes are going to when they come in contact with the, with this mRNA, given the right um, conditions, they'll be transformed into proteins. We'll say these are there's proteins coming out, but the actual mRNA, rather than just being let back into the system, it's actually being degraded. Okay, and the enzyme that's degrading this, let's just assume that it's in abundance and the degradation is going to happen almost relatively, almost immediately. Okay. So what we care about is how can we model the concentration of this mRNA in this space? Well, we could look at the degradation of the mRNA, but we know that that's going to happen almost immediately after it's put through the ribosome. Um, let's just say and it, that well, we, can, we can say that its transformation into mRNA is really dependent upon the mRNA coming into contact with the ribosome. We can model that as a second order second order reaction because it's dependent upon the amount of mRNA at the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the amount of concentration of ribosomes at the rough endop endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, knowing that, let's write a boundary condition at x equals zero. Remember, x equals zero is at the rough endoplasmic reticulum this time. And I just want to flip it around to show you that, you know, it really doesn't matter how you decide to define your coordinate system. What matters is making sure that your boundary conditions are consistent with that coordinate system. All right? So we know that there's some sort of reaction happening at the rough endoplasmic reticulum, and that is a flux of a certain, hold on, we're looking at the concentration of mRNA. And we said it could be second order, so we have some rate constant, and then we said it was dependent upon the concentration of mRNA and the concentration of the ribosomes. Okay? And these concentrations are the concentrations at 
x equals 0. Because we don't care about the amount of mRNA that's out here, we only care about the mRNA that is actually at the rough ER. So is it positive or negative? All right, well, let's say that it's, just for the sake of argument, um, let's say it's negative. If it's negative, then when we divide both sides by the negative diffusion coefficient, we get a concentration gradient of mRNA that is positive, right? This is saying that as we move in the positive x direction, we should expect to see an increase in the amount of R of um, mRNA. Is this what's happening? Let's see. If we started with a uniform amount of mRNA throughout our system, remember our system is everything in this boundary. If we start out with a uniform amount of mRNA, then if we let the system run for a little bit, we would expect that the, the mRNAs that are at x equals zero are actually becoming degraded, they're disappearing. So we ended up, we end up with a void of mRNA at x equals zero. That void is equivalent to a decrease in concentration. So as we move in the positive x direction, we should expect to see an increase in mRNA. So this, this turns out that, you know, we were right to give a negative sign of this, this rate term because it, it gave us a concentration gradient that was consistent with our coordinate system and with what's happening in our, in our, in our, in our system and our reaction. So just to reiterate, the thing that's important about this is to really focus on what's my coordinate system and what are my concentration gradients looking like. And once you do that, it's really easy to make sure to, to decide whether this should be positive or negative. All right, guys. Um, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, comments, please leave them below. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.